Okay, my name is Songbin Lee from KAIST, South Korea. And as part of organizer, I would especially thank Subro for doing all hard work for this second uh, APWQM workshop. So today I'm going to discuss uh, something related to this uh, presidium based uh, cage compound, which is the condo material, and some of the interesting stuff for the multipolar order and also superconductivity. So for the relevant and ongoing work, and uh, this is already published work, so you, this is three papers that first two is related to some kind of multipolar order, and also the third one is related to some kind of superconductivity. So before I uh, start of my talk, let me first introduce all my collaborators. It's kind of big collaborations. So from Simon Traps group uh, from the University of Cologne, and also the, from the University of Toronto, Aaron Pramikanti and Yongbek Kim. And for this multipolar order uh, related work, it's done with this collaboration. And also for the superconductivity work, mainly from my student and postdoc, uh, Alcanda Michel, who is here and also the Gilliam Cho's professor in postdoc is uh, also here. And I especially thank to Professor Satoru Nakatsuzi for the useful comments and information about the related experiment. So first, let me briefly introduce what are these materials, which looks very uh, complicated. So this is the presidimium based compound, which is the cage. So if you just focus on the presidimium, which we have the balance presidimium 3 plus, then we have some kind of, you know, the localized moment. And also we have these transition metals and this aluminum or zinc, depending on what kind of material that we consider, it forms some kind of cage. So all interesting phenomena coexist in this compound. First of all, this presidimium 3 plus, it has, if we just focus on the presidimium 3 plus sites, then it forms some kind of diamond lattice. So as Gang already introduced, they form this kind of, you know, the diamond lattice. And also if we consider some competing interaction, there should be some frustrations. But interestingly for this presidimium 3 plus, I will explain later, it has no magnetic dipole, but we have magnet, uh, the quadrupole and octopole degrees of freedom. And also this transition metal and all the combination with aluminum or zinc, they have contributed to some kind of itinerant electrons. And they, especially for not the entire material, but for some materials, for example, for the aluminum case with titanium or vanadium, it's been confirmed that they have some Fermi pocket near the gamma point. And then, of course, because we have the coexisting localized moment and also itinerant electron, it's very natural to consider what kind of condo interaction that we have. So on top of that, we have this material has some kind of superconductivity exists. So the main question, I'm not going to be able to answer all of these questions, but I will just focus on the first of all, the presidimium 3 plus and this quadrupole and octopole degrees of freedom, and then I will move to the superconductivity. So how can you understand this complicated material? So the main idea, I think the main uh, purpose of this understanding this material lies on this old Donia phase diagram. So if we have the localized moment and also itinerant electrons, they will form some kind, they have some kind of condo coupling between them. And then this is the famous Donia phase diagram as we tune the interaction between the itinerant electron and localized moment. And as a function of temperature, we will have some kind of RKKY interaction where the, we still have the localized moment, but because of the itinerant electrons, it will have some kind of long range interaction, which is nothing but the RKKY interaction. And then once we go beyond some, you know, the critical J, then we go into some kind of condo region where because the J is large enough, then this hybridizing J Shen occurs. But interestingly, if we consider uh, for this multipolar order, not just magnetic dipole, this original idea for the Donian phase diagram is related to on the magnetic dipole moment. But the main, idea, the interesting question that we can ask is, what if we have some kind of quadrupole order, then can we have something like similar to this Donia phase diagram? So search for this new type of Donia phase diagram with this multipolar order. 
So let's, uh, let me briefly introduce how the experiments are done and how can we understand this presidimium 3 plus non Kramer doublet. So presidimium 3 plus with valence 3 plus, we have two electrons in partially filled 4F orbitals. And from the inelastic neutron scattering, they have figured it out that with strong spin orbit coupling and also crystal field splitting, that we have the lowest non Kramers gamma 3 doublet exist and well separated by other triplet and singlet. So this is true, not just true for this titanium aluminum case, but for other vanadium aluminates and also other cases, we have this kind of gamma 3 as a lowest non Kramers doublet. So non Kramers doublet means that they are not protected by time reversal symmetries. And especially if you just focus on these two states, and if you are writing down what are the pseudo spin one half and what's the representation is then this J is a total angular momentum. So one of the, let's say this is tau X, tau Y and tau Z. Then one of the two of the components of this pseudo spin one half is representing this quarter pole degrees of freedom, which is nothing but three J square minus J square or J X square minus J Y square. And another component, let's say tau Z, is related to this octopole degrees of freedom, JX, JY, JZ, those combinations. So unlike for other non-Kramers double S systems, for which we also have the presidimium for the quantum ice system, quantum spin ice, for such cases, we always have some one direction, let's say well-defined uh, local Z axis, we always have some magnetic dipole and it's perpendicular direction we have this kind of quarter pole. But in this case, this special com uh, combination of spin orbit coupling and crystal field splitting, we always have this no magnetic dipole degrees of freedom, but quarter pole and magnetic octopole degrees of freedom. So, and this is showing some specific heat data, just focusing on the magnetic contribution. And this is when failed is zero. And this is for the blue one is for the titanium one. And the red one is for the vanadium. one. So the interesting thing is if you just focus on this lower figure, then this uh, for the titanium case, you have the single, single transition. On the other hand, for the vanadium case, you have these two double transitions. So, and also more interestingly, if we apply the field, if we apply field along different directions, then there this double transition, if we just focus on the vanadium aluminum case, then this, depending on how, which direction that you apply field, then they have very uh, anisotropic field dependence. So that's what I experimentally uh, observed for the titanium aluminum case. To summarize, we have just a single transition and a lot of uh, lots of experiments already confirmed that it's related to some kind of development of ferroquarter border. On the other hand, for the vanadium aluminum uh, compounds, we have this anti-ferroquarter border, and it happens at point below 0.75 Kelvin. And there's some additional uh, transition, which uh, it's not uh, yet, but we propose that's related to the octopolar degrees of freedom ordering. And also for this vanadium case, they have this anisotropic building. So that's what we know from the experiments. And in order to, as a theorist, in order to study this, how can we simplify this as a, a Hamiltonian? Simple, how can we simple, uh, deal with this simplified Hamiltonian? And if we just focus on the presidimium 3 plus, as, a, as you, know, you keep seeing this diamond lattice, they are sitting at the diamond lattice. So every nearest neighbor, they have four neighbors. And every this presidimium 3 plus sits in this diamond lattice site. And especially because I already introduced it because of the spin orbit coupling and crystal field splitting, we have the two components of this pseudo spin, just focusing on the non Kramer sublets, the lowest doublets. Then we have the pseudo spin two components are related to quarter pole degrees of freedom, and another one is related to octopole degrees of freedom. So the simplest model is uh, one more thing is not just uh, having the localized moment presidium three plus, but we also have lots of itinerant electrons contributing from the trans transition metal and also aluminum or zinc. 
So this quantum kind of coupling with itinerant electrons, it will be very natural to think about not just spin-spin, uh, quadratic interaction, but the multi-spin interaction will be very uh, important as well. So then this will be the kind of minimum model. So imagine that, again, this tau perp is related to tau x and tau y, which is related to this quadrupole, and tau z is related to octopole division. So then, of course, uh, in symmetry-wise, it, no, it's not guaranteed that their coupling should be isotropic. So that's why we have this lambda. But on top of that, we can have some kind of tau perp. This quadrupole, quadrupole interaction can also couple to the octopole division. So this can be the minimum model that we can come up with. And then, the, again, it's, it's, I am emphasizing that this tau perp, if we apply the time reversal symmetry, then it's time reversal even, because it's related to j square. On the other hand, tau z is related to j cube, so it should be time reversal all the quantum. So then the possible phase and finite temperature transitions, how can we have this? So that's, yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. So IJ, KM is all the nearest neighbors. So IJ, nearest neighbor, and JK, nearest neighbor, and M, nearest neighbor. Sorry, the details, but important. So with this model, how can we understand the possible phase transitions, and what are the ground states? So again, this is the minimum model that we uh, want to simulate. So within classical spin uh, approach, this is what Simon Treps and uh, their students have been worked on. So this is the Monte Carlo results. And as uh, Gang already mentioned, if this is, the, uh, this is the axis, when we tune the ratio of next nearest neighbor to nearest neighbors. And another vertical axis is this four spin interaction that I introduced here. So this one is tau perp, which is the quadrupole couples to the uh, octopoles. So this multi-spin interaction, which is sitting on this diamond lattice, if we have this J1, J2, so it will induce some kind of frustration. And in addition to that, we have this multi-spin interactions. So this is the phase diagram that uh, we get from the Monte Carlo result. And you can just focus on uh, this region is where J2 is almost negligibly small, then we will have some kind of new phase, simple new phase. So oh, lambda for this simulation, we put just as zero. Yes. Right. So this four spin interaction, whenever you see this color, not just white color, but this reddish or bluish, that I will describe later, it, it's related to finite temperature. There is not just a single transition, but double transitions. So this is uh, already, you see this many times, so I don't need to introduce more details. But if we keep increasing the next nearest neighbors, so let's just turn off the four spin interaction terms. But if we just frustrate the system, then it goes to from anti-ferro or ferro, depending on the sign of nearest neighbors, it goes to the spiral order with having finite cube. So if you consider this, you know, what is the common origin plot, the common origin plot is nothing but you just collect all the spin ordering for the entire, whatever the simulation, the size, and then you just collapse to a single unit sphere. Then once it becomes ordering, then this is, let's say, this tau x and tau minus tau x, so it is simple nil, and it goes to this spiraling, spiral order because they have this, you know, the spin is spiraling, so you see this kind of common origin plot. On the other hand, if we consider the four spin interaction term, then this four spin interaction term can induce, with increasing this four spin interaction term, induce pure, starting from the pure ferro quadrupole order, it will induce some kind of quadrupole and octopole coexisting order with, uh, with having some double transitions. So if you consider this, uh, just focus on uh, this region. So starting from this along, we are going along this direction. Then starting from the pure quadrupole order, then common origin plot, you on, only see in the equator either, either tau x or tau y is ordered. On the other hand, once you crank up this four spin interaction term, then you will see some kind of finite tau z, which is the development of the octopole order. So this kind of thing, uh, if we just focus on this reddish region, 
Then as we just scan as a function of temperature, then this is a specific heat data. As we decrease the temperature, then they will see this double transition. So the first, we have this quadrupole order sets in. And then we further lowering the temperature, the octopolar degrees of freedom is now ordered. So I am not showing the uh, other graph, but this red bluish region is opposite. So octopole first uh, is developed, and then quadrupole is uh, like at lower temperature is keep developing. So then if we consider, uh, you know, re remember this vanadium aluminum, what happens is if we have, from experiment, we have this double kind of transition. So we have quadrupole and also this unknown transition. So we consider that if we starting from the titanium compounds and going to the vanadium compounds, then this vanadium has some kind of stronger hybridization, which in principle can lead to larger this four spin interaction term and also J. So we can propose that this double transition may be uh, related to this quadrupole and octopole uh, degrees of freedom is getting or ordered at this temperature scale. So then now we move on to considering that there's some double transition for the vanadium compounds. Now we have applying the field. So with applying the field, magnetic field, along 100 direction or 110 direction, then we show this very anisotropic behavior with this double transition. So how can I understand this? So uh, not just focusing on the microscopic Hamiltonian, now we are, we, assuming we already know there's some order parameter, then we can analyze what kind of uh, symmetry allowed Landau theory uh, kind of approach. So this is a local symmetry that they, this uh, presidium compound has. So we have time reversal and inversion and also S4Z and uh, mirrors and also threefold rotation symmetries. So we can do the simple symmetry analysis. And in order to do that, we introduce this either which represent the ferro quadrupole order or anti ferro quadrupole order and similarly for the octopole degrees of freedom. So whenever you see this phi u is the uniform, which means we just having two sublattices for the diamond lattice, you just sum. So uniform means you develop some kind of uniform of ferroquadrupole order. On the other hand, if you subtract uh, between those, then it's like staggered. So it will develop some kind of anti-ferroquadrupole order. And similarly for the uh, octopolar degrees of freedom, you define the either uniform or staggered the polar degrees of freedom. And then the main essence of this order parameter and analysis within the Landau theory, then we found the two important features. So within this quarter border, imagine that we don't care about any kind of octopolar degrees of freedom and just focus on the quarter border, which is related to just phi S or phi U, the uniform part and staggered part. Then the first observation that we found is we can of course have the pure ferro quarter border which is, could, could be relevant for the, this titanium case. On the other hand, if we have some kind of anti ferro quadrupolar, then what we found is, in, in terms of symmetry, we always have to allow this staggered uh, order parameter, which represents this anti ferro quadrupolar order square, always linearly couples to the uniform of the uh, ferro quadrupolar order parameter. So that means if we develop the anti ferro quadrupolar order, then it always has to have this parasitic ferro quadrupole order accompanied. So that should be uh, relevant for this vanadium compound. Okay, so in order to summarize, if there's no magnetic field, then the symmetry allows this kind of term, the cubic ferro quadrupole. So in terms of free energy, we allow this phi uh, uniform part uh, order parameter, cubic terms. So it will give some kind of phase locking. On the other hand, for the anti ferro quadrupole case, we allow, of course, the sixth order, which is six state degenerate. And if we consider the coupling between ferro quadrupole and anti ferro quadrupole, then we always allow this kind of cubic terms, which is the staggered phi square always coupled linearly to the uniform. So that guarantees there should be some coexisting phase. Whenever we develop anti ferro quadrupole order, then there should be some parasitic ferro quadrupole. And also, in terms of these all different uh, order parameters, there should be interactions. 
So if we include all together with octopole degrees of freedom as well, then you can, in principle, write uh, many types of interactions, which in principle can give some kind of competition between anti-ferro or ferro quadrupolar, or depending on the, the sign of this coefficient, sometimes ferro quadrupole, some kind of quadrupole order can induce this ferro octopole degrees of freedom. So it's related to all these uh, domain and fields, but uh, let me just skip this. So what happens if we apply the magnetic field? So uh, before we apply magnetic field, let's just focus on this ferro quarter per phase. So this phi sub u is nothing but you have this tau x and tau y, and then this tau x tau y you have you have some kind of uh, theta between their uh, angle, and then this phi theta u is nothing but this uh, relative angle between uh, the order parameter of tau x and tau y. So ferro-quadrupole phase, as I mentioned, we always have this phi cubic term. So that guarantees that it goes to this three clock model, which in principle should expect this first order. And this cubic anisotropy locks the phase of theta u. And it's been confirmed, which is consistent with the experiment, that this particular type of quadrupole order is, is actually favored. On the other hand, if we go to the anti-ferro quadrupole order and coexisting with some kind of octopolar order, then it's more complicated. But in principle, if we just consider some kind of, you know, uh, the, the coefficient, then we can, starting from the paramagnet, then we can have pure anti-ferro quadrupole order developed with parasitic ferro quadrupole. And then further the decreasing the, this, you can imagine this as a temperature, then further decreasing the temperature, you can develop of this ferro octopolar degrees of freedom. And as, uh, as you see, this uh, order parameter is getting developed. So what happens if we apply the field? So if we apply the field, then of course tau x and tau y, and also tau z, which is the pseudo spin half, is not linearly coupled because they are related to the quadrupole and octopole degrees of freedom. So the way how it couples is if we consider the, this lowest non Kramer's doublets, then you go to the excited state and coming back. So that process gives the second order perturbation, which in principle B square can couple to tau x and tau y. So whenever they couple to this tau x and tau y, because this tau x and tau y transforms like EG, so B1 and B2 should also have some kind of form factor like EG. So then you can, in the presence of magnetic field, you can also write down what kind of allowed term that we have. So this is psi B is nothing but the form factor that is equivalent to B1. But in, without any field, I already we already had this anisotropic term, which is phi to the power of six. And with increasing field, with having some finite fields, then you allow this kind of uh, additional term. So then we can expect, in principle, there should be some competition between these. So this competition, what happens is this is without magnetic field, what I showed uh, before. And then if we include the magnetic field, then depending on uh, the field direction, let's say 0, 0, 1 or 1, 1, 0, then starting from the paramagnet, you can have some kind of different behavior, whether these two different transition at zero field, one, it's the critical temperature is further decreasing or increasing, okay? So those kind of thing is coming from, uh, we can explain from this, how this uh, magnetic field couples to this quarter per degrees of freedom. And if we compare this with, uh, it's not exactly one-to-one -one, uh, consistency, but the general trend that we can explain, and we can understand from this simple Landau theory. So then now we consider this, this is the short table that I am just summarizing, uh, I got from this review paper. So whenever you see this uh, TQ is the quadrupole order temperature, critical temperature, and TC is the, where the superconductivity is developed. So now we move to the superconductivity scenario. So if you just compare uh, each of the different material, then you will see whenever they exhibit some kind of development of quadrupole order, then they always have some TC the superconductivity well below the temperature. Sometimes it happens together for the rhodium, uh, rhodium case, but whenever we have some development of quadruple order, then uh, we have this uh, superconductivity also exist 
of a lower temperature. So then we can think about, yeah. Yes. Uh, is there a relation? Uh, that, I mean, what about the TC of those compounds? Uh, TC, for example, this vanadium. So this vanadium one, this T antiferropropyl, uh, it should be 0.7 ish, yeah. but uh, 0.6, we have another transition. Yeah. So that's the only compound that so we compound. Yeah, at this moment we right at this moment we are not so sure about the, the correlation between them. But assuming that we have some correlation between this magnetic quadrupole order and superconductivity, then how can we understand this? So I rather go to the very exotic scenario, which may not be applicable to this uh, special compounds. But let's think about, we have the spin orbit coupling and cubic symmetry for these compounds. So then, as I mentioned, we have some kind of, uh, some of the quadratic band touching we can have at the gamma point. Whether it's near Fermi level or not, uh, we, of course, we have to be confirmed. We have to confirm for these special systems. But if this exists, then we can write down the low energy uh, physics within this Luttinger Hamiltonian with J effective 3 half. So Luttinger Hamiltonian, you just consider this is a, a momentum sphere and energy, and this band, each of these Kramer's doublets, and these two doublets are exactly meet at gamma, gamma points. So depending on whether our chemical potential is here or here, then you will have different, uh, uh, you know, the, the, you have finite density of states. So if we have mu is at here, then it uh, doesn't matter. And we can write the simple kinetic, uh, the kinetics, which describe this, uh, the Luttinger model. So this is nothing but the regular k square term. And this di is coming from one to five, is like T2g and eg in the momentum k square. And then this is the gamma matrices. So the gamma matrices is for the j effective three half phase. So then this is our kinetics. And of course, if we put this chemical potential at mu, then we have Fermi surface. If we assume SO3 symmetry, then just pure spherical. And if we consider cubic symmetry, then it's like, uh, it's, you know, it preserves this cubic symmetry. So then now we consider starting from this quadratic band touching, which well described by this kinetic Hamiltonian. And now we allow what kind of symmetry allowed uh, the interaction term. So we, here we just consider the short range interaction term, which is the regular psi dagger psi, but we also have this gamma A, this gamma matrices run from one to five. We can have this kind of interaction. And what the important point is, whenever we write this kind of interaction for J effective three half basis, then using this spheres identity, we can exactly decouple into this S and D wave pairing channels. So it's exact decoupling. So starting from this interaction term, and then you can exactly decouple into this uh, pairing channels uh, with S and D wave. So then furthermore, it opens not for the S wave, but if we have this, then it have the attractive D wave pairing channel. It opens attractive D wave channel. So for instance, if we assume this GI is can be different for the cubic system, but imagine that for the SO3, this GI is all equivalent, then you have this, uh, after exact decoupling, this is S wave, and this is five different component D wave, then you have this S wave is always recursive as long as we consider this all positive uh, values for this coefficient, and then this D wave is becoming attractive. So then uh, this delta D is nothing but we have to uh, separate into this T2G or EG. So this is complex tensor order parameter and also we have S wave as well. So there are some invariant theory which people already worked on within SO3 symmetry. So within this, if we assume this SO3 high symmetry, then we can write down what kind of invariant order parameter, uh, higher order, uh, order parameter combinations. So for instance, this is quite complicated, but let me just skip it. So for instance, this I1 is nothing but just delta total magnitude of squares. But I2 and I3 is delta square times delta star squares, something like this. So we can write the general uh, symmetry allowed Hamiltonian uh, free energy in terms of this 
uh, all these D wave superconductor and also including S wave. So then what we found is there is some S wave linearly coupled to the cubic despite sorry, so its combination of some linear combination of delta. So this linearly couples to this D wave cubic term. So that gives what we found is whenever we tune this M1 is the basically how big is this term and QD2 is nothing but if QD2 term is positive or negative because they, it's related to delta square of total uh, magnitude of square, then depending on the sign of this QD2, they will favor either, you know, real value of D wave pairing or the complex value of D wave pairing. So this is the phase diagram that we found, and especially this uh, energetically, we uh, confirmed that they select some special D wave because of this parasitic S wave. Because this parasitic, this linear term is not always coupled to, it always couples to some particular D wave, which is this D square minus R square term. And this story is totally applicable also to the half Hoistler compound, which uh, these days is very actively studied. So for instance, this yttrium platinum bismuth, the TC is quite low, 0.8 Kelvin. But this compound already confirmed that this low energy physics is re uh, realized by this Luchinger model. And then the superconductivity is, exists. So, Coming to this, uh, this phase diagram, if we just focus on this phase diagram, what happens when QD2 is uh, smaller than zero? Then as I mentioned, QD2 is nothing but the coefficient for this delta square of entire uh, absolute value of square. So then they favor the real value. Because QD2 is negative, then we want to have some kind of real value of E wave. But in the tuning M1, I, as I explained, it favors this special D wave channel, which is because it can couple parasitic to uh, linearly couples to this delta S. And you can write down uh, once we develop such kind of order parameter, then of course we can draw how, what kind of gap structure looks like. So this is the original, our SO3 symmetric Fermi surface, and for the normal metal. And then now we uh, introduce the st stabilization of this parasitic S wave coupled with this D square special uh, D wave pairing. And then this is the gap structure. So for, unlike our intuition, if we have D plus S wave, this, this nodal line of like gap structure is still remains. And furthermore, more strikingly, if we calculate what is the, for, you have the line node, and if you calculate what is the winding number, uh, for this closing, uh, you know, this uh, circling, uh, surrounding by this uh, line node, then we found that uh, it has some non-zero uh, term number. So in order to show that, uh, I'm just sitting somewhere, I'm just projecting everything into some special plane. And then this is one zero one bar plane, because if we just consider this Z, uh, Z plane, then uh, this plus two and minus two get canceled. So that uh, we took the special plane cut, and then this is the how Burke looks like. So you have basically these two lines, and then these two lines are of course depending on how you uh, how you project to this special plane. Then you have this kind of uh, Burke uh, line. On the other hand, if we just focus on the surface, then because they have this uh, non-zero term number, we have this drum head-like surface state, which is very, uh, uh, very exotic. And then the story goes further exotic. If we consider this dqd2 goes to negative, then this is basic, uh, sorry, it should be positive. So it sh if it's positive, then in order to minimize the full energy, this delta, the D wave, favors D plus ID. So this favors complex D wave pairing, and at this moment, they favors, energetically, we found that they favor this mixture of Z square type and X square minus Y square type of D plus ID with parasitic S wave. So this is what we found, and then the gap structure is even more exotic. So if we have the stabilization of such superconductivity, then the gap structure is not fully gapped out, or nor it has the line node, but it has this Bogleyball quasi-particle from the special Fermi pockets. And furthermore, it has the having term number. 
So we found that it has this special structure of this Bogolibov quasi-particle form, this Fermi pocket, even inside, the, even we develop this superconductivity. And indeed, if we do the same thing, if we cut the special surface plane, then we have this uh, Fermi arc, which is the indication of these are topologically, uh, the, the turn number plus two and minus two, they are kind of uh, linked at the surface. Yes. It's normal meta. No, 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 not exactly at the quadratic Fenton chain, but slightly above or below. Doesn't matter. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. So this is the story. Or the the basic. If we starting from the Lutinger model, then we have we can open the attractive DUA pairing, and furthermore, we can always it's very highly likely it, it, it will give a way to you know, realize this topological superconductors with D plus S wave. Then how can we bring this to the uh, relation to the quadruple order degrees of freedom? And if we think about the quadruple order sitting, like let's say it's for simple barrel quadruple order, then it will give some kind of uh, coupling to the electron density. But electron density is not just uniform electron density, but we have some kind of form vector of the electron density. So because of the quadruple order, we, it, because it couples to the electron density, it will deform the Fermi surface. So that's the simple uh, idea that we consider. So if we consider this ferro quadruple order, again, it's J, G, uh, J square term, uh, order. And then once we develop either this or this, Ferro, ferro quarter border, then it will distort our original SO3 symmetric or cubic symmetric, uh, the Fermi surface, distort like Fermi surface. So then using the same analogy that we have been discussing, then we can think about how the Fermi surface distortion and it evolve uh, changing the evolution of the superconductivity nature. So first we consider one of the other type, one of the two types. And then this vertical axis is nothing but if we crank up what is the interaction, effect, uh, interaction strength. And this is how the order parameter changes that Achana has been uh, calculated. So this starting from the normal metallic phase, once you go to reach to the critical value of the interaction, then it first favors D plus ID. On the other hand, once we further increase these interactions, then it eventually favors this 3Z square, uh, this 0, 0,1 with small s means within this, this is 0. So this is 1, which means this 3Z square type of D wave superconductor with parasitic S wave is being developed. On the other hand, if we consider another type of Fermi surface distortion, then we can have, starting from normal metal, it can go to the uh, some complicated, this linear combination of this x square minus y square and 3z square minus r square type of with different magnitude. It's uh, been first developed. And then it goes to this uh, the pure beer with parasitic S wave. And eventually for the other case, it eventually favors this x square minus y square. So there's reason why we have uh, this kind of evolution. But uh, because of time, I cannot explain. But the main point is, if we starting from very low density of electrons, which is the case for the starting from the quadratic band and we allow the very small chemical potential, then by cranking up this interaction, G, then it can easily change the nature of the superconductivity. So that kind of the message uh, of this entire work and uh, let me just summarize. So the first part of my talk is focused on the presidium 3 plus localized moment. And the main point is for this uh, localized moment, we don't have any magnetic dipole, but quadrupole and octopole degrees of freedom. And frustration and also multiple spin interaction can induce the multiple double transitions of this quadrupole and octopole degrees of freedom. And also the magnetic field dependence can be quite anisotropic. The second part of my talk it was related to the superconductivity and how can we consider this ferrocorp order. So the, for the exotic scenario, we started from the Lutinger model with interactions. And if we have this multi-orbital uh, uh, model, then we have this uh, very natural way to stabilize this D-wave topological superconductivity with some S-wave coexistence. 
And when, when we set, uh, develop this ferro quarter order, it will distort the fermion surface, then it can sensitively change the nature of this topological superconductor. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Sorry, I was just I was trying to understand the statement about the different types of superconducting pairing. Does that come from comparing free energies for different choices, or is, does it come from the form of the Yeah, that's good. Terms? So I didn't show all the details, but you can starting from, for instance, for if you are focusing on the real, mate <laughs> real material for yttrium plate investment, then you can, uh, starting from, from the experiment, you know what is the density of state. And starting from there, you can, uh, uh, in, within one loop calculation, you can uh, estimate what is the, how big is this uh, QD2, yeah, constants, which, uh, you know, details in our archive. Uh, so just to, uh, so there is, uh, the different forms of superconductivity can even coexist, right? There's nothing forbidding that. This is yeah. just like. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, like 3G square minus R square with X square minus Y square that can coexist with parasitic acid. More questions? Okay, if not, let's thank Sanbin once more.